Hi friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Stitching with Sue here, doing my first official video since my incident. So welcome everyone. If you're brand new here, I would like to take the opportunity to say thanks so much for stopping by. And if at the end of this video or during the video, anytime, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Once you click on that button to the right of that, you'll see a little bell. You can go ahead and click on that bell to decide if you want to receive notifications when I upload new videos. And my suggestion would be, heck yeah. So go ahead and ring that bell. Just click on that bell and um, feel free to leave comments down below. Uh, anything, you know, just be nice. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, share because sharing is caring. So welcome. I have a... Um, We'll see how this goes. Uh, have a project to share. Oops. I uh, posted it. Let me see if I can get it in here. I posted this over on uh, my Facebook page. And if you're not familiar with that, my Facebook page is, of course, Stitching with Sue. So come on over there and join the fun. There you will find lots of machine embroidery, machine embroidery enthusiasts. And I saw this design off Etsy. I have it posted where uh, what the Etsy shop is over there on Facebook. So if you're interested in it, I'm not making any kind of commission or anything off this. It's just something I found and I thought, yeah, I can make that. So it's a cute little ornament. Don't mind the back. I use fabric glue for the back. Um, I was having issues with trying to um, get the thread in the needle. And so I just use fabric tack. And my daughter said it needed a nose. So we had these little... Um, wood uh, balls and I just use a fabric tack and stuck it on there. So now of course you know this was my sample one so you know the sample one is always the learning one. So I did find I did realize that this first this first um, level here should be white because it should actually be his beard and um, it's a cute little gnome. So it is a 33 minute stitch. It's a little tedious in that there's lots of um, placement of fabrics. But it's a great scrap buster so if you have a lot of scraps you may want to consider doing this um, fun project and like i said head on over to my facebook page at stitching with sue and you will find the information as to the um, etsy shop where i purchased the design from so let's go ahead and get started and let's see how this goes so i went through my fabrics and um I'm having a hard time making a decision. So, so I just figured, you know what? You know how I roll. Let's just go with it. Let me get this cord out of the way. I have a... Kind of got a little chilly here in northeastern Pennsylvania. So I had to bring in my little um, portable heater thing. So, okay. So let's go ahead. So uh, here I have um, mesh and... I have to apologize up front because sometimes the words don't come, um, but just please be patient. And if I say the wrong thing, I apologize, but it's been crazy in my life. Um, so this is a poly mesh. It's a cutaway. That's what I'm using on the bottom. And this is um, came on different, different sizes. I decided I was going to do the five by seven because if you're going to make these for ornaments or package tie-ons, you don't want them too big, but if you're going to do it for something else, then hey, you do you and you go what size you want to go. So I have a white thread, 7511 needle. I'm using my brother Bob. It is an Essence VE2300 um, flatbed embroidery machine. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to do placement. And I have white bobbin thread. And um, I shared with you um, one of the videos about this, this thread that it's called Hennyworth Poly Select. And I've been using it, absolutely love it. I would actually, I would actually love if there's Santa Claus out there. If Santa Claus would send me in all, oops, my chair is hitting the thing, hold on a sec. If Santa Claus would send me the thread in every single color, I love it. Okay, I was on the wire there. You don't wanna be on the wire. Okay, so here we did a placement. Next thing you're going to do is get your batting. And I may have to pull it off to the side so I can see. I'm going to put my batting on top. 
and I use those really, um, one of the previous videos I did, I use those from Sweet Pea Designs, those acrylic rulers to cut my batting, I'm telling you, it's fabulous. You just cut up a whole bunch of them and you have them all ready to go and, and life is good. So we have a lot to catch up on. Um, not so sure this is the right video to catch up on because of the tedious stops and starts and stops and starts. And, um, you know, I probably would lose my train of thought as to where I was going. But you know how that is. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to trim this batting. But I'm going to go back and redo that because I need to put a piece of fabric. Although I think, I think you do. Wait, where did I put that sample? See, I lost the sample already. Um, maybe you don't put fabric on the background. I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking maybe you don't. Okay, maybe you don't. All right, I'm not going to do that. Scratch that. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to take it off the um, machine though because I need to trim the batting. And I have to bring that have a little table here off to the side. I'm trying to make life as easy as it can be for myself. And I'm just going to trim the batting over here on the side. Just makes it a little easier. So where have I been? What's been going on? Well, something um, medically has been going on with me. Um, I originally had thought when I went to the eye doctor because I was having vision problems probably about six, six to eight weeks ago or so. They said I had cataracts, which I knew I had cataracts forming. But as time progressed, waiting for my next appointment to meet with the cataract surgeon, I noticed a lot of other um, weird things going on, including um, feeling like I'm falling when I'm walking, unsteadiness. I go to stand up and I get severe, severe pain in my head, um, on my left temple. Um, flashes, almost like lightning, sometimes like you know gray color sometimes bright color almost like a kaleidoscope and of course the change in vision Let me try to see if I can get close okay so I trim my batting and we're gonna go ahead and do the first step we're gonna stitch out a little square so I was teaching classes on Wednesday nights in the month of October at a local high school with my stamping business and, um, you know, many of you know that if you have, let me see if I can readjust this because I'm having difficulty seeing. Now, I know, I know y'all want to see, but Sue got to see too. Okay. So this is just a piece of felt and it's kind of like fleshy color. Um, oh, and the other thing is my depth perception is off. So, um, I'm trying not to waste too much of this felt because I don't have a lot of it if I want to make a bunch of these. So we're going to stitch down this little square. So um, driving at night, you know, was difficult. And then I started to notice driving during the day was starting to get difficult. Um, almost to the point that, you know, I kept blinking and blinking and blinking. Now I'm going to take this off again. I'm going to trim around. So this is pretty much the procedure of how this whole little project's going to go. It's like... You know, stitch and trim, stitch and trim. So let me trim this. So when I think back, though, those of you that have been following me, uh, I took Bob and Betty to Allentown. I live in Pennsylvania. I live in northeastern Pennsylvania. I took them to Allentown, took them down, came back, picked them up, came back. Each way is an hour drive. I had difficulty seeing, but again, in my mind, just what they told me, cataracts. So, um, and I'd come home and I mean, I'd be exhausted. I'd have to go lay on the couch um, because it was very stressful. I'm having an issue cutting this. It was very stressful um, driving with the traffic and not being able, you know, to see because of, quote, cataracts, which I'm sure I do have cataracts, but that wasn't the whole story. Okay, we're going to do the next stitch. This is going to be where we're going to put the white down. So I remember to put the white down. So anyhow, um, Friday, two weeks ago, 
and um, I was driving to work and I thought, wow, things just really, really are not good. Oh, you know what? I have to trim this. Where's my big scissors? I'm going to be using white next. We're going to do the, uh, so it, what, it, what this does is it stitches out the rectangle and then you'd kind of do a placement down and flip it and st stitch it. That's the way it does it. But it but yeah, the camera is, I don't know, maybe I need to move my embroidery machine over to the other side because the camera is like right in my face. All right. So let me just stand up and see this is going to stitch. Okay. So this is going to stitch right here. So you want your fabric to go, it's going to stitch there. You want your fabric to go up here and it's going to flip down, I think. So anyhow, um, I was driving to work. And by the time I got to work, I thought my vision was really cloudy. It really was not good. Something is majorly wrong. And I do, I work in the medical field, but it's orthopedics. It has nothing at all to do with, um, you know, eyes or anything like that. Okay, so now we're going to do the flip method. So we're going to fold this down. And this is how this whole little cutesy ornament is done. So I won't go into all the details, but anyhow, um, I was told that I should go em em emergently to the emergency room. Do not drive. If someone drive you, go there. So we did, I had a coworker take me there and um, in the emergency room, they did, um, you know, testing and they did CAT scan and they found a mass on my brain. Okay, let me trim this. I should have trimmed that better because I could see the uh, fabric underneath, but we're not gonna worry about it. So they found a mass, so they said they wanted, they transported me from um, one of the local emergency rooms to their big, hospital because there's like a Geisinger hospital here in my area they have like multiple places and um they wanted to do MRIs with without contrast there was about from when I I didn't realize I was in there that long but you know my son said you were, I was gone for two hours to have this done and uh trying to determine what exactly it is. So what the doctor told me, so now it's gonna go up here and it's gonna do this part. What the doctor said was, they won't really exactly know what it is until they go in. So here's what's gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna have surgery. And I was like, what? <laughs> So there was a big mix up and everything, miscommunication. They called to tell me my surgery was scheduled for that Tuesday. Now this, that had been Friday, that Tuesday. And nonetheless, it was, the surgery was scheduled. And um, it uh, came back as a glioblastoma. And apparently it's, I don't want to say popular, but apparently it's a common thing. Um, it usually hits, you know, older people, people in their 60s or so, um, where mine was at. So I did have a craniotomy. So the back left side is where um, they removed the mass. So the doctor is about seven hour surgery. And the doctor said, um, we got it all, but you know, sometimes things are left behind. I don't really have no control over that, but um, I will need some radiation and chemotherapy, and uh, we're just going to go from there. So that's kind of like not, now it's going to stitch this one down. That's the story in a nutshell, pretty much not going to, into all the details. So, I mean, I'm off from work. I feel pretty good. Um, I still get headaches. That was another one of the symptoms was I get headaches. So I still get headaches. Not as bad. I haven't had the flashes. I'm on um, anti-seizure medication. I'm on, there's a whole like countertop. My kitchen is like, the whole counter is loaded with pills. Um, and I'm on uh, steroids and um, 
all sorts of other things. And, but now I am, well, I knew I was diabetic before all this and I'm just on oral medications for that, but I'm more um, aware of my blood sugar levels now and I test my blood sugar and I'm taking care of myself health-wise much better than I had been because, you know, it's a life-changing experience, this whole thing is. All right, there we go. I feel better now. So that's going to be his little beard. Okay, we're going back again. We're going to do the next one. So anyone out there that's, you know, experiencing any kind of little things, don't wait. Um, this, this type of tumor is, for what the doctor said, fast growing. And it came about within a little over a month. Now, you know, yes, it can come back. He did say that. Let me get my pile of fabrics here that I kind of went through my scraps and see what I want to use. Um, it can come back, most likely will come back, but um, they are hopeful that with the um, radiation and the chemotherapy that they'll be able to, from what I've read, and I know my, my surgeon said, now I'll be going and reading stuff, but you know, I mean, who doesn't? Right? Who doesn't want to go and read stuff about it? I'm going to use this red. Um, it looks like what what they basically try to do is to cut it off. You know, figure where is it going to where is it going to go? And he said if it does come back, it will most likely hit the same area, which the area it hit in the brain, because I don't know if you know anything about brains. I don't. Well, I'm really off on that one. I'm going to have to trim that. Oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to... Um, different hemispheres of your brain do different things so in a way I kind of feel I'm gonna have to trim that because I'm like way off I kind of feel um, almost fortunate if you could even think that way that you would, that's that's how I have to think but that's the area it hit me you know that it didn't hit an area where you know it affected my speech my my um walking my you know all those major things in life that you need to live on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just basically, you know, the vision and, um, which I could still see, but I do have an appointment coming up with a neuro ophthalmologist. I have an appointment next week to have the staples removed from, from the um, incision. I also have a, another appointment coming up with a can a care of plan team, which they're going to, um, we're going to talk about what all is going to be happening. And um, unfortunately, I, well, I, I'm 61, and um, I had planned on, you know, re continuing to work until at least 67. I, I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, I'm not able to drive. I'm not sure if I will be able to drive um, because I think what he said, you have to be able to pass like 50% of the skills for driving. And my depth perception is off. So meaning on my right-hand side, I can't tell how close I am. And you know, the one thing that was the eye-opener was that Wednesday before all that this happened, I had gone for gas. And when I went for gas, and I, you know, my gas tank is on the opposite side of the car than normal people. So I have to park on the right-hand side. Normally, cars are on the left, but the, I have a Nissan, and the Nissan is the other way around. So when I went to get out of the car and go around to, um, to fill up the tank, I literally was almost right on top of the tank. I mean, I couldn't even get a leg in there, but that's how close I was. And that's when I started realizing, you know, I realized before that, like I would be hitting things, like I'd hit the curb a little bit here and there, and I'd be like, oh, that curb, who put that curb there? Or, you know, you kind of make excuses for a lot of things that happen in your life. Just thinking, you know, um, for instance, memory, you know, you just think, well, you're getting old, you have a lot on your mind, you know, but all of those things um, could equal to be something bigger. So I just want to stress to everybody that if you think something, you know, just doesn't seem right, don't wait. Um, had this gone on, I don't know if I'd even be here, to be quite honest with you. 
because between the mass, which was the size of about a golf ball, and all the swelling surrounding it, that's what was affecting it. So, my word to the wise, don't play around if you're not feeling well. Call your doctor, get things checked out, and um, don't wait. So, I am, um, there. well, like I said, there's, there's no fix for it. And my neurosurgeon said all he can do right now is he can s try to prevent it from going further. So he's not going to fix, things aren't going to get fixed, you know, whatever is the, you know, has already happened. But if he can do that, and um, if I could go on with day-to-day -day activities that I enjoy, which are a little difficult right now. So I'm, I'm pushing the, pushing the button here doing this literally but the videotaping of it it doesn't have anything to do with the actual um making the project it's just the thought process the you know concentration all that kind of stuff but i really was itching to come back you know i, I really missed everybody i missed you guys so i'm here because i missed you and i wanted to do a video I did post a video this morning. I'm looking at this fabric I have here. It has like these little moose on it and I think it's super cute. And you know what? I think I'm gonna use it. It's from uh, Creative Notions, their subscription box. Let me see. I think this would be really cute. So anyhow, um, I don't know what's gonna happen. Let me get a drink for a second. I'm still recovering. I get tired. You know, I do so much, I get tired. Um, I don't know. I the doc, My surgeon does have me off from work f until the end of January. I guess it's kind of um, wait and see right now. Just wait and see. Um, do I go back to work? Do I take early retirement? Do I, you know, where, where do you go? Where, where do you go? What direction do you go? Um, if I, if I don't, you know, have another more 10 to 20 years here, you know, I want to be able to do the things that I want to do. Oh, I guess where did I put my, I guess I need my hoop. <laughs> All right. You know, so there's a lot of questions in my life right now. A lot of things, a lot of answers. I don't know. Um, I have I have a lot of support. I have a lot of friends. I have all you guys. Everybody's been so wonderful. Um, everyone cares. Everyone is, you know, whatever we can do. What do you need help with? I think the most, um, one of the most upsetting things of the whole event is losing your um, independence. Um, I'm, I'm single and not being able to just, oh, I need a quart of milk. I just go jump in the car and go get it. Not being able to go and do those sorts of things is a bit upsetting. Um, you know, th those kind of things, you know, th those everyday things in life that you're just so used to doing that you can't do now, but one day at a time, I'm gonna fight this till the bitter end. I'm not a quitter, I didn't give up. And um, I have uh, a new grandbaby on the way and two other grandsons. And I want to make the most of the time that I have and enjoy my life, so. So let me know um, in the comments. I know I'm not alone in this. Um, I did, like I said, I did do some research and I found that quite a lot of people, you know, have have or had this. And um, it's been something that doctors have been working on for like 30 years. Where does it come from? They don't know. Um, are you pr who's prone to it? They don't really know. Um, I do have a past history of renal cell cancer, 
which I had to have a kidney removed about seven, eight years ago. They don't believe it's related to that. So there's just a lot of questions, but there's always new treatment plans. There's always something new. And I'm, I'm ready, willing, and able to try everything and anything that I possibly can. Now, he did talk about the radiation and chemo. So the radiation would focus on the area. And he said a lot of times, even though they got it all, sometimes there are microscopic portions that could be left. And if so, then, you know, the radiation would go in there and zap that. And the chemo, now my mom had chemo, it was horrible, absolutely horrible. The chemo, he said, are um, pills. It's medication that you take. So it's a little bit of a different approach than it would be, say, for some other cancers. But everyone always says, what do you need? What can I do? What do you need? Here's what I need. Your continued support and your prayers. I mean, I've had so many people wanting to, to do things for me. Setting up GoFundMe pages, all that. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm okay. I'll be okay. Everything will be okay. We'll work with it. Um, as long as I can continue to uh, collect, I have a AFLAC plan that I'm able to collect partial of what I make salary-wise. As long as my bills are able to be paid and I can continue to stay in my house because, you know, I have animals. We got Dory. We can't, we got, you know, Dory needs to, she, she's the star of the show here. So as long as all of that is taken care of, um... My kids have been great, absolutely great. My son has been, you know, we had to be at the hospital the morning of surgery at um, 5.15, 5.15 a.m. And he, there he was, he was there. He's been taking me for all my appointments so far. Um, I am trying to work with, um, I got a phone call the other day from um, my health coverage and apparently there's different, um, things in place that you, you know you can qualify because that's my biggest thing is I hate I don't want to be a burden I don't want don't want to be a burden on my kids um but you know with all these appointments and even though you know I'm trying to think I should do like a green there or something I'm just gonna do this other uh let me look let me look let me look um there's a lot of appointments and things you have to go to and I mean he works during the day but his employer is, is you know, whatever your mom needs, wherever she needs to go, don't worry about it. But, you know, I want a little bit of an independence. So if I have to go to the dentist, I don't have to say, oh, but I got to go to the dentist now. And I know that's coming up sometime in this month. Okay. All right. Next one. I'm going to use this. I don't really want to use this, but I'm going to use this down the bottom. So anyhow, I'm looking into with, with social workers as to what opportunities there are out there that I could take advantage of to help me uh, get through this and um, do what we got to do to take care of it. But I know there's a lot of people watching out for me and um, I'm very grateful for all of that. All your prayers, all your thoughts, all your well wishes. Do not go unnoticed. Trust me. Sometimes we forget to say, but and speaking of, there she is. And even the animals, you know, animals sense when things are wrong. And of course, they're like, you know, hey, when is she going to work? Is she here or leaving? You know, because I'm here all the time. I don't go anywhere. And um, especially now, I don't go anywhere. But um, they sense. They come and they, they want to sit on your lap. Little Miss Dory, she, she cuddles with me every time I lay down. Um, <clears throat> I had to kind of yell at her because she was wanting to groom me. Um, I guess she thought, you know, my head needed grooming. I don't know. But I'm like, oh, no, no, let's not do that. But, you know, you'd be surprised when you think that you had a major surgery. So they did it on a Tuesday. And I was discharged the next day, that afternoon, and went home. And that was my biggest fear is we were trying to push for me to stay one more day. But... According to the physician, he said, the longer you stay here in this hospital, the longer you have a chance of picking up something. And you know what? He was right. He was right. So it was just a matter of, you know, getting home. Um, they do give you 
a very high dose medication to deal with the pain, which initially there was a lot of pain. Um, but I, I, I did it. And now I'm pretty much just doing Tylenol because they were oxys and I really don't like taking medication. Especially with only having the one kidney. I'm having to worry about that remaining healthy for the rest of my life. Alright, we're almost done here, folks. And I know, I just chatted away. But, you know, I didn't really want to tell everything. But it's kind of like you can't tell one without the other. You know what I mean? So now you all know. You are all informed. Um, and I know I've seen on the page... A lot of people are like, I think you're doing too much. You know, you ought to slow down. But you know what? I can't. I can't do that. I can't just sit idle. Um, I need to get back to my normal routines. I need to get back to um, doing the things in life that I enjoy. The hardest part was just the other day I came into my craft room and I mentioned this on my Facebook page. Came into my craft room and tried to color with markers, and it's difficult. The perception isn't there, so to try to try to use scissors to cut something out, a delicate thing to cut it out, it was difficult, you know. So I started doing a diamond painting. I don't know how many of you know what that is. That's those little tiny dot things, and they go on a almost like a cross stitch, but they're little beads. And it's sticky, and you put the beads on, and you go like from one to the other. You go the do, the do, do, back and forth. And I thought maybe that could be something that I feel like I'm able to do something, and it will help with the coordination. And I have to tell you, it does. It really, really, truly does. And I know that's probably not straight right there, but whatever. All right, let's see. We're almost done. I think. Okay, now we're gonna do the triangle. Okay, so now we got to do the hat. And I'm always thinking the hat I want to do in the red. Um, let's see what else I got in my bag. My bag of tricks. My bag, my bag. If I had that olivey color, I don't know if I have any fabric with that olivey color. And I just want to do the red. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? But these are so fun. I hope you're enjoying it. And I hope you're not sitting just rolling your head saying, oh my gosh, she's just going on and on. But, you know, that's why they make a delete button. That's how we look at it, you know. You get people that, you know, if they don't want to hear it, then, you know, you don't have to. No one is holding you here. I'm looking, where did I put the snowflake fabric? There it is. I think I'm just going to go with the snowflake hat. So let me cut a square for that. This is going to do a triangle up at the top. But this is all done in the hoop. You don't have to do anything outside the hoop. And I am a hoop girl. I love hoop projects. Okay. I'm just going to do the placement. So how are you all doing? Um, what have you all been up to? Let me know down in the comments. Um, I posted a, a video. It was it's a replay video that I had for my private group of um, all of those elf attire things. And if anybody's interested in any of that, um, let me know because I'm not able to do you know any craft shows or anything. And there was going to be one that was going to be Thanksgiving weekend, and I toyed around with doing it. And good thing I held back because someone just said, "No, don't do it. Just let it go." But I won't be able to um, to do that and to sell the things. So I thought I'm, I'm going to open it up to, um, wait, let me think, am I doing this right? Yes. Let me open it up to my YouTube people. And if anyone is interested in um, elf sneakers, uh, clothes, little elf babies that could be adoptable with a little birth adopt adoption certificate, so I do have that video I posted and I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking a lot of money for it, you know, because I really, um, I, I don't want to charge you. I don't want to charge a lot of money. 
for that. You know what I mean? Okay, so that's going to be for the hat. All right, so let's stitch this. So, and I think the backing, I'm going to use that checkered pattern. Oh, maybe it's a little paper. ribbon. So, yeah, check them out. And if you're interested in it, let me know. Um, I know a lot of you are not local, but if you are local and you're interested in um, picking it up via porch, let me know. Okay, so now we're going to do his little eyes. So I'm going to change my thread. I'm going to use the, um, this is the black Hemingworth. Yeah, can you see how my hands shake? Yeah, I have to ask the doctor about that because I kind of get shaky. Everything's like the right side, the right side. A little shaking. So it kind of makes it a little hard sometimes to, to do certain skills. But, you know, if there's some therapy that's available for me, like, sign me up. <laughs> My thread. Okay. All right, so we're going to do two little eyeballs. And let me get my piece of ribbon for my hanger and we'll be stitching up the back now I'm not going to um, take time to turn it right side out because it's just it's it's hard for me to do that and um, it took a lot a lot of time yesterday or the other day whenever I made this to do that all right and I'm gonna go back to the white thread this is little eyeballs it's super cute you definitely if you if any of you guys purchase this design please let the woman know on the Etsy store that I referred you I don't know maybe she'll send me some free files or something that would be nice wouldn't it be get some free embroidery designs but um right, I'm gonna thread this okay there we go put the white thread back on but you know embroidery is is something that I so enjoy this. You you don't know how much um, this brings a thrill to my life. And um, I just love it. Okay, so now I have um, my hanger. Let me pull this out. I have to pull it out because I can't see. So videos are going to be a little bit different from now on. Until I can get to that eye appointment. And I'm thinking that, you know, I probably am going to need a new set, a new pair of glasses. Oh, oh, get my paper tape here. Get a piece of paper tape to hold my ribbon in place. And I do notice, though, when I'm doing uh, close up work, I just take my glasses off and I'm better off you know, with no glasses as opposed to glasses. I'm gonna use another piece of tape just to be sure. There. Okay. And the backing fabric. Just gonna grab the big piece. We're going to do right sides together for this. So today is Friday. I forgot to mention that. Today is Friday, uh, November 4th, 2022. Let me bring this back down again. I could place my fabric over the whole thing. And after this, I'm going to go grab myself some lunch. I actually was able to cook yesterday. I made some chicken. About a week ago, I made myself breakfast, so I was. I'm so. I I, I apologize for hitting the camera. <laughs> so, um, but I do have to say, I'm not the cleanest cook anymore. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I, I had made quite a mess, but you know, I cleaned it up. And my daughter had brought, brought by. Uh, she had to take my grandson for a dentist appointment. And she brings them in the area, and I can see my fabric looks crooked, but whatever. Um, she
she made homemade mac and cheese. OMG. So I made uh, chicken tenders with my, my mom's recipe with the egg wash and the um, seasoned breadcrumbs and you kind of fry it in the pan. So we made that. I know, so get your fingers out of the hoop because you just don't realize. And so I had that for lunch yesterday. So I'm probably gonna have that again today. And oh my gosh, the homemade mac and cheese. If you are a mac and cheese person, stop eating the box mac and cheese with all those chemicals and yucky yucks. Make yourself some homemade mac and cheese. Really not that hard. There's tons of recipes out there and y'all can do it. I know you can. But what I will do, this is it. Here we are, we are done. 33 minutes and this took, huh? 40 minutes. Finish sewing. Okay. That's not too bad. But there is a lot of stop and start, stop and start. Let me look at the back. Here's the back. I get it. Oh, I can't really get it under there. Really not too much. Not much to see there. Okay, I'm gonna take it out of the hoopy. And then you just want to trim around. Now there is an area that's left open where you're going to turn it right side out. And let me locate that before I trim because I want to leave a little bit extra. The hole is very small. Okay. The hole is, uh, can you see? Right here. It's very small. So let me trim this. And I'm going to hold off on talking while I do it. Trim. Just something satisfying. The sound of scissors cutting fabric. Or is it just me? Can you hear that? I don't know. I just think there's something satisfying about that. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So see, I left uh, I, didn't do that. I left a little bit extra, extra here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it right side out. But like I said, the hole is very little. You know what? Maybe I can do it. Maybe I could do it. It's just going to take a little time. But, well, I'm not going to do it because we're going to be end up here for an hour if I do. But I will um, stop the video now. I will turn him right side out. And then when you're done with it all, you just kind of fold it in half. And you stitch the back seam together. And that's what makes the kind of... But like I said, I use the fabric pack. You kind of just stitch that so it's ugly back there. But that's okay. This was my sample. And um, that's how it's, uh, put him there. Somebody, he's watching you. Somebody's watching you. And, uh, and then it's ready for hanging. So these would be super cute on a tree, um, on gift packages. I'm still trying to do it while I'm talking here. Because I really want you to see it. I want to see it. It's coming, it's coming. Hold on. Patience, patience. I know you're all probably like, oh my gosh, we turn it already? But no, you're not like that. People aren't like that. We're just anxious. We're all anxious. We want to see it. Oh, it's coming. It's coming, coming, coming. So I'm hoping to get back to doing videos again. Um, I don't know how often, but it, it's my Halloween block that I was making, the sweet pea one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish that. I did start, that was the first thing I started working on when I got back home. And um, I just had, it was too much concentration. It was too much, I don't know. I just didn't feel comfortable doing it. The The needle broke. No, I had to change the needle. Oh, I just poked a hole in that. Let me get my bone folder. I had to change the needle because the thread kept breaking. And then... Um, I changed the needle and then something happened. The needle broke and then I couldn't get the needle back in. And I was like, all right, yeah, no, I, could, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I was just so upset that I couldn't do it because the, th the small things in my life that are so important to me, if you can't do them, it's sad. 
It's very sad, very down a bad rabbit hole that day. But I thought, okay, just let's not rush things. You can get back into the swing of things one project at a time. Okay, let me take the tape off. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Gosh, I hope you guys go in and make these. All right, so here, let me move this back. I don't mind any mess. I did clean up the craft room when I realized I couldn't do the stitching. I just cleaned up the craft. So here it is. Now see, I guess if you really want to, you could kind of hang it like, you know, like that. But what you do then, they tell you, you know, here's the seam. So you can go ahead and stitch that or you can use some fabric tack, which fabric tack is my bestest friend. And then what they tell you to do is put these together, right sides together and to stitch it, which maybe a sewing machine, oh, it's kind of thick. I don't know, to stitch it. But what I did is I just went and did it this way. So probably not the best thing. And you have to press it. And then there's your little hanger. And then get yourself a little knob for the nose. Look at this guy. And look at them. <laughs> oh my gosh, little things in life just make you so happy. And you know, if you want to embellish it with a little, you know, button or, you know, whatever. But, oh my God, super cute. Oh, sorry. Sweet Jesus, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Um, but oh, so cute. So cute. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, look, it doesn't look too bad if you even did it just like that, you know? Um, I'm so happy to be back and so grateful for, for all of you out there, um, helping me along the way. So yeah, if you like it, if you like this kind of content, if you like chit chat, and I know a lot of you do, because a lot of you do say you like, it. if you don't like it, it's not your cup of tea. Hey, no worries. You, you know, you can stop at any time, but I want to thank everyone for all their love and support. And, um, I'm looking forward to doing more and more videos. Um, it's another way for me to make a, some extra income as well with not working and, um, limited income coming in. So by running the AdSense is Google pays for that. Um, they pay you for running ads. So that helps me out tremendously. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day, night, evening, weekend, whatever it is, wherever you are. And until next time, happy stitching. Bye for now.